Okay, so now we're going to look at an example of uh, how to actually do typecasting in C++. And typecasting is a way in which we can convert a variable that is of one type into another. And in some cases, um, a variable can be cast quite easily from one type to another without actually doing anything. For example, um, if we want to uh, cast an integer to a float, we've already seen this. So if we have a float, which could, we could also have a double or whatever. So if we have a float, if we assign it 2 divided by 3, what are 2 and 3 here? Integers. So 2 divided by 3 is going to be integer division. So that gives us the result of what? 1, right? So it takes the integer 1 and stores it in the float x1. So that's automatic, right? Do you agree? Like you didn't have to do anything special to do that. Now, what about if we wanted to do this? We had, what about if we had... What about if we wanted to have y1 divided by y2, but we wanted to actually store this with, these are both integers, but we wanted to divide them like this, and we wanted to store this, the result, using as a floating point. So instead of it being 1, we want it to be 1.3, is it 1.6? 1. 1. Okay. So if we wanted to do that, how would we manage this? Because this, this obviously no longer works, right? It, if this doesn't really cast the... It does the integers fine, but what about if we wanted this to actually be a floating point, preserve the, the digits? Yeah. So if we did... You're saying we could do something like this, where we go float... Y1 divided by Y2. Oh, like this. Okay, we'll, we'll try that. So let's actually display these out. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to display out what these are. I'm going to put the expression here. And I'm going to use a slash t. What does slash t do? It's a tab. So I'll put that out first. And then I'm going to see how... I, I often cut and paste just to make things quicker, but I'm going to put this expression out here with a tab. So let's actually... and change this to x2. So let's see what the result of this is. So First thing we need to do is we need to compile our program, which is called typecasting. And then we need to run it. The a.out is the default file. So it says 0 and 0. That didn't work. Why did this not work? So if you want the result of this to be a floating point, what you really want is you want that division to be floating point division. Does that make sense? So um, instead of putting the whole thing, it's it makes more sense to do this. And what this will do is it'll say, hey, first thing, convert y1, equal in convert y1 into a floating point and then divide it by y2. Now in this case, y2 is still an integer, but that's okay because we know that a floating point divided by an integer will still use floating point division. Question? No. Uh, yeah, you could. Uh, well, I'll show you. Just a second. So let's just make sure this works before we move on to another example. Just get, let me try it for one sec here. So if we now compile this and we now run it, we get 0 0.6666, right? Okay. You had a question? Okay. 
And just another thing, it does round, right? So it does do the decimal sixes uh, and then does decimal seven. But this is really a repeating forever decimal six, six, six. Okay, so uh, the next thing is, I think what you were suggesting, what's your name again? Okay. Um, so what you were suggesting was that instead of this, we did something different. Let's say this one's x3, where we did, is this what you were suggesting? Float? Okay. Now, let's just copy, I'm going to copy my C out statement here and just update it. So what you're saying is instead of doing that, we could have done this. And let's actually try this and see what happens. And in fact, that does work. But what this is doing is, this is not actually doing float of y1 divided by y2. This is doing, this really means float of y1. So turn this float y1 is an alternate syntax to this. Does that make sense? Is this how you, for those of you who have done this before, is this how you've learned it? So, so here's one comment, is that both of these methods are valid, but they may not work on all compilers. They work on your compiler, so you don't have to worry about it, but there's a chance they may not. So there's also another way of doing this. Uh, which is, which will uh, there's a way to do this which actually will work on all compilers and the way of doing that is to actually do let's do float x4 equals uh, to do what's called a static cast and we're going to do a static cast of y1 and now if we go our c out we put that here and we're going to do this static cast so static cast float y1 this is just another way of doing the same thing and when I'm showing you different ways I'm not showing you because I'm like you need to memorize every single way I'm showing you so that you understand the different approaches what I would suggest is pick an approach that you works for you and use that. To be honest, I find this kind of makes a lot of sense. Personally, I like this, this one because it sort of reminds me of, of sort of some of the other ways we see for built-in functions like the set precision that we saw in the last example. So I find that one easy to remember. But it's really up to you which one you do. And if we compile this, it does work in the same way. Now, so far, we've, done with, we've dealt with doubles in our last example, and we've seen floats. What about other things like characters? Well, we can actually use typecasting. Remember I talked about Unicode and ASCII? And in those cases, there was a number, right, that corresponded to a character, wasn't there? So it actually turns out that you could actually do something like this. Uh, 105. I'll just pick some characters here. So let's just do, these are just some numbers. Now these numbers here are all uh, within the range that, these are all numbers that are within the range that math to characters. So let's go, let's look at this here. So we have four of these, right? These are four integers. Now, what we could actually do if we wanted is and we can also use, we don't have to use, we can use the static casting and stuff. We can cast stuff um, in a C out statement as well. We don't have to just do it in the assignment to a variable. So we could do, for example, static cast char C1. And then we could do static cast 
char C2. C3. Now, what, one thing I just, before I run this, I just want to point out a little style thing. So you may notice, how did I do the C out statement here? You notice how I indented here by the operator? Um, I did that because if I put this all on one line, it would be a really long line, and um, it would wrap and makes it harder to read. So in general, it's good form. It varies from, I'll say this, but I mean, there's different people who give you different advice. Um, the old standard was about 80 characters. So you don't want lines to be longer than 80 characters, which is pretty much out to the line there. Um, I think that's what that's actually representing. Um, but in newer, some of the newer standards, like I know within Eclipse, for example, they default now to a larger one because there is an assumption that you should, with larger screens and everything, that you have more space. Anyone know where the first 80 character limit came from? So it had to actually do with terminal size, but it also had to do with uh, dot matrix printers. Do you remember those printers? Or you probably never had one, never mind. Okay, they use dots, they print characters, they have little holes on the side and they spin. Anyway, they do about 80 characters. So um, often as well, a lot of older machines you did were what are called time shared machines. So you print it off your, so you would try your code. You'd run it, but then you'd print it off and go away because someone else had to use the computer. So you'd print it off and you'd by hand go through and figure out what you want to change and then come back and type it up after. So anyway, the point is, is that it's just good form to sort of take a long line like this and separate it like this. And you can see that this is a very readable because the C out is here and then everything is nicely aligned. So let's just see what happens now. If we now look at this, it types out Rena. Turns out that's actually the name of a student who was in the class last year. So I just remember that those characters were that. But you could actually look up in ASCII or look up in Unicode your name, what the numbers are, and if you have integers for those numbers, you convert them to characters and will print out the letters. Now what would happen if we used, um, like for example, we saw that a number of the earlier um, characters were um, 12, for example. What's I'm going to add an additional one here. What will print out with 12? What? Yeah, you know what it actually did? Do you notice here? It did a new line, right? That's a special character. So special characters won't actually always print out on the screen. So when you do this sort of typecasting from an integer to a char, you won't necessarily get something that's visible. But if you use the visible set of characters, the numbers, the symbols, and so on, and letters, you'll be able to, you can do this. So does that make sense about typecasting? Is there any questions about this example? Okay, no questions then.